Welcome back. Now, hopes that Iran was preparing to soften its stance on compulsory hijab were stamped out this week when President Raisi said the law would be strictly enforced. It follows months of anti-regime protests and a brutal response by security forces. Hundreds of people have been killed. Several young men were executed. Others are still on death row and many thousands of Iranians are languishing in jail. Well, my next guest was jailed in Tehran's notorious Evin prison for several months back in 2009. Her crime? Being a Christian. Marzia Amirijadeh is here with me in the studio to talk about her experiences. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. And, and first of all, welcome to Israel because I know it is your, your first time here and I know as well it's always been a dream of yours to come here and, and visit the holy sites. What has been your experience so far? Yeah, as you mentioned, it was a dream for many years because I'm a Christian and uh, Israel is so precious to me as a Christian because uh, Jesus was a Jew and this is the land of, uh, you know, many uh, great uh, prophets uh, of uh, Bible. And uh, God loves Israel and Israeli people because uh, they are chosen people by God. And I really wanted to uh, visit this land. And finally, um, I uh, got to visit Jerusalem. Lots Amazing. of people say they have a, a special feeling when they come here, especially uh, people who have strong religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. is, is that your experience? You told me you've already been to Jerusalem. Yeah, it, uh, it was uh, in this early morning that I arrived and immediately I visited Jerusalem. And I, uh, as soon as my airplane landed, I, my tears comes down because, you know, it's very spiritual, spiritual and special to me, this great country. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. And you've been living in the United States for, for, uh, for many years now? For almost 11 years. You're clearly enjoying life today. Uh, it's wonderful mm -hmm. to see. Um, if I could take you back to 2009, uh, a, a horrific experience. You were jailed in Evin prison, as I mentioned. Can you tell us what happened? What, what led to you being there? Yeah, more than 20 years ago, I converted to Christianity. Uh, a lot of miracles happened, and I gave my heart to Jesus. And I was very active as a Christian, talking about my faith with people. And because of um, those activities, they arrested us. Uh, but the main issue was our faith in Jesus. The main charges was apostasy, which is punishable by death under Sharia law. And I was sentenced to death by hanging. You were sentenced to death? And what happened? Uh, because of, you know, lots of international uh, pressures, um, like Amnesty International got involved, Pope from Vatican sent a letter to government on behalf of me and my friend uh, who were together. And many Christians started advocating for us. They protested again in front of um, our embassy in uh, UK. And um, because of all those pressures, they had to release us. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive. That's why I believe uh, international pressures is very important. Well, thank goodness uh, that you're, you're here to tell the tale today. Uh, what is the status for Christians in Iran? Then? Because it, it is a recognized religion, right? Uh, a Christianity? Yes. Uh, it, it, they are minorities, and uh, they consider Christians and other religious minorities as second-class citizens. It's not just uh, Christians, Baha'is, Jews, everyone um, uh, getting persecuted because of their faith. Do you think the persecution is, is worse right now, given the ongoing situation with the protests? Uh, yeah, because, you know, they, they arrested many uh, people, um, and they... Um, charge them with political charges because they know if they wanted to put them in prison and uh, execute them like you know my case they know that uh, there that there will be lots of international pressures that's why they arrest them and put them in prison and charge them with uh, spying um, and you know other political charges in order to keep them uh, in prison for many years so a lot of innocent people languishing in Iranian yeah. jails right now you were actually taken to the detention center that uh, Masa Amini uh, yeah. was was taken to, the woman whose death sparked the current protests? Yeah, that's a small detention center, but uh, honestly, that's an underground dungeon. I was there for 14 days, and um, you can't see 
uh, anything and it's uh, no one can see that that place there is no air no light they throw food at you and I had to sleep on a cold concrete floor cover myself with wet blankets that were soaked in urine and later I understood why the blankets were soaked because they locked the cells uh, doors from 8 uh, p.m. until 8 uh, in the morning so prisoners could not control themselves the guards usually humiliate you by forcing you to be naked right in front of their eyes. Male guards? Uh, uh, no, women uh, guards. Mm. But um, I, I was thrown with other, um, you know, women like prostitutes um, and many women who got arrested by morality police. And they usually keep prisoners like two, uh, maximum three days. And then the court would decide if they go to another prison or get r released. But they kept me and my friend for 14 days intentionally in order to put more pressure on us. And the first judge told us, I, I will make sure you get executed. And he actually pushed the case for execution. Goodness me. And, and I mean, you've gone really from the depths of hell, as you've described it there. You've gone on to write two books, um, Captive in Iran, your first yes. book, and A Love Journey with God, a, a second book about your, your personal faith. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you're, uh, you work in politics in the United States. You have a great life there now. You, you, you've really gone from one extreme to another. Yeah. Yeah, I ran as a, a candidate for a state house uh, last year. I couldn't win the election uh, because my uh, district was very democratic. I ran as a Republican. Uh, but yeah, I'm involved in politics and I um, also try to be a voice for Iranian people because of, you know, my experience. I experienced the brutality of the Iranian regime firsthand and I um, can share a lot of things about, you know, what's happening in Iranian prisons. And uh, yeah, and uh, coming to uh, to Israel, uh, to me, um, I wanted to send a message of love, unity, and friendship uh, to uh, to people and to the world. That uh, you know, for many years, the Iranian regime tried to undermine the great friendship between Iranian people, Iran, and um, the good people of Israel. And many people do not know about the history, and they covered the truth. And uh, but. Uh, um, I want the world to know that uh, this regime, people are chanting in the streets that this regime uh, is not representative of people. And Iranian people, majority of Iranian people do not have any issue with Israel and Israeli people. We love uh, Israel and, and especially as a Christian, I love Israel because God loves Israel. Well, and, and that has been the, the message actually from, from uh, the Israel, Israeli leadership over the years. We have no problem with the Iranian people. Our problem is with uh, the Iranian regime. Do you think that people in Iran are aware of that support? Does it mean something to them? Uh, I believe the Great Awakening has started in Iran because for many years the regime tried to uh, indoctrinate kids uh, by forcing them uh, to uh, to have uh, to go to uh, demonstration and chanting death to Israel, death to America. They try to demonize Israel to people to tell the world that you know to tell them that uh, Israel is the enemy of all Muslims and Palestinians. But this is not the tr uh, the truth. And I'm I'm glad that people uh, could see the truth. And uh, if you listen to the protests uh, and the slogans of people people are saying that our true enemy is um, the regime, is you, not America and Israel. And that, that's a great awakening that people refuse to set fire in the flags of America and Israel. They refuse to step on the flag because people, ordinary people honestly, have no problem uh, with you know the rest of the world. It's just the regime and they wanted to tell the world that this criminal regime is not our representative. And just very briefly, do you think that the current protests can and overthrow the regime? Definitely. We have hope. Uh, and um, they know that majority of people do not support them. Uh, they try to survive, to, uh, you know, to tell lies and uh, use different ways to survive. But uh, I think um, women of Iran are uh, the big group are going to overthrow this regime because they were the groups that were under so much pressure and uh, women's rights uh, violations. Uh, that's why w when you look at the protests, you see that women are leading most of the protests in Iran. The Iranian women are certainly yeah. leading the way, aren't they? Uh, uh, Majie Amirjadeh, it was wonderful to talk to you. Enjoy the rest of your trip uh, to Israel. So and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.